At Option Genius, we believe that you deserve freedom, financial freedom, so that you have no more worries and more than enough money. Time freedom, so that you could do what you want, when you want to do it. And choice freedom, to live your life on your terms. But the system and Wall Street are rigged against those little guys. So how do we fight back? Well, my friend, that's what this podcast is all about. My name is Alan Sama, and this is the Option Genius Podcast. Ho, ho, ho. Here we are, back for another edition of the Option Genius Podcast. Uh, I wanted to ask, answer a question that I get from newbies, which is... What should my first trade be? Yeah, uh, I mean, I remember it was a while ago, but I kind of remember, you know, what it felt like when I first got trading, selling options. I mean, it was, it was so exciting. It was so new. It was like a ray of hope because I don't, I, mean, I don't know if you know my story, but I had um, lost my job, and so I took this money that my wife had saved up. You know, she worked during college, and after that, she got a job as a nurse, and she saved up all of her money because she was working at home and all that. So she had a bunch of money saved up when we got married, and basically, she let me use it to try to get to my dream of being a full-time trader, a professional, you know, a trader that where I'm paying the bills by trading. Um, I had gotten laid off, and I was like, "Baby, I I, I can't go back to work. This is not for me," you know. The, uh, wearing a suit and 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 dressing up and that's it just it's choking the life out of me let me try to make it as a trader so she agreed and you know i went to work i proceeded to basically lose a ton of money very quickly day trading swing trading futures trading all kinds of different stuff uh, buying options and even I, I did sell some options too because you know you read articles and you watch videos and say oh this is cool okay let me try this thing so I was trying everything I was learning I was doing things most of it was horrible I would have some wins it's not like I lost all the time but normally you know if you look at it week to week basis month to month basis my account balances were just going lower and lower and lower but then. You know, I reviewed all my trades. I sat back. I said, this is not, this is, I can't do this. You know, I'm going to run out of money very soon. What is going on? Going through all my stuff, doing the review, I found that there were some trades where I had actually sold options that worked out in my favor. And so I was like, all right, let me focus on this. Let me, let me see if I could just pick one thing and do it and really learn about it. And the more I looked into it, the more I studied it, the more I read about it, I was fascinated i was enthralled i was like wow this is so cool why didn't i know about this before why didn't i do this before you know the the odds are in your favor the money is really good it doesn't take a lot of time there's not as much stress you know and i don't have to be stuck in front of my computer all day long i mean i i remember there were times when i was day trading that you know you're in the chat rooms every single broker or, or, or a lot of these websites they have chat rooms where these guys who are day trading they hang out in these chat rooms because they're in front of the computer anyway and so i remember there was a story of this this one lady who she put on a trade and then she really had to go to the bathroom i mean really 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 bad she couldn't she couldn't do it and she was a big trader she ran to the bathroom by the time she came back she lost thirty thousand dollars in like three minutes and I, I, I was like, holy cow, you know, how do you, and it broke her, like, it completely, like, she, she, it bankrupt her, I mean, she didn't, I don't know if it bankrupt her, but her account was, like, almost zeroed out, she had margin calls, she had to quit being a trader, we never saw her again in the chat room, and it was, it was insane, um, you know, that, that's the kind of pressure that these people are under, and I'm, I don't want to have that kind of pressure, I mean, geez, that's crazy, I, just, it's, how how do you sleep at night? You know, I mean, that's why they tell you when you're day trading that you always get out of your trades before the end of the day, before the market closes. Don't go in any trades overnight because that's just insane. You know, you wouldn't be able to sleep at night. You'd be jittery all night. Yeah, that's enough for me. You know, I like sleeping at night. I sleep really well at night. And it's all because of the way we trade, you know. And so really, when you think about it, so you go back and you say, all right, you know, if I was brand new to this. Okay, I never sold an option before. I didn't really know what it was about. I understand puts and calls, but what would the first trade be? What would what should I do 
to get my toe in the water, to really just try this out. You know, I just want to see. I just want to get a feel for this. And there's two options, really, I think. You know, I wouldn't want to get into anything really complicated. I want to do something where you won't really have to understand all the mechanics behind it. You don't have to know about implied volatility. You don't have to know about the Greeks. You don't have to understand um, the probabilities and, and all this stuff. Um, really, what I would say is, okay, if you're if you have an account already, and you own maybe a hundred shares of stock, okay. Hopefully, it's maybe an ETF, maybe it's a, a big company like Coca Cola or Disney or something like that. You know, I would go ahead and just place a covered call. That would be my first trade. That would that would be my advice. So go in, take a look at it, and say, you know what? Let's say Disney is trading at a hundred dollars. You know, in the next 30 days, I don't think it's going to get to 110. You know, that'll be a 10% gain. It's not going to get to 110. I want to go ahead and sell the 110 call. And maybe I only get $20 for it. That's okay. You know, this is not about how much money you can make. It's about just getting your toe wet, just doing it, getting, you know, popping your cherry, kind of, so to speak. And so that's what my advice would be to be for that. You know, your first trade, if you have some stock, never done this before, covered call, it's easy to get approved for. You know, almost nobody gets rejected when you apply to add options trading to your account if you just say, hey, I just want to do covered calls because that's the one that the brokers, for some reason, they really think that's the safest one even though it's, it has as much risk as a naked put on the risk graph. That's another story. We can get into that later, but you know, so if if you have some shares and you want to just do it and you just want to get a taste of it, what option selling is all about, go ahead and sell one call above where your stock is trading at right now. We don't want to lose your stock. We don't want anything to happen with your stock. We want you know we want this option to expire and we want to take that money that we get, right? So let's say we sell you know ten percent above the price. So if your stock is trading at hundred, we sell ten percent above that. So at 110 we sell that 110 call option. Do it for like about a month, you know, maybe a month or 45 days away. And whatever you get, maybe you get fifteen dollars, maybe you get thirty, forty dollars, depend. You know, whatever you get, that money goes into your account. That's yours. No matter what happens, that money is yours. You never have to give it back. And then for the rest of the time, until that option expires, I just want you to watch it. I just want you to look at it and be like, okay, oh, you know, I sold it at, um, and I got thirty dollars for it. Let's say, for example, let's say you got thirty cents for it, which is thirty dollars credit to you. So you got thirty dollars. And every day, that option goes down in value, little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit. It's going to go down, down, down in value until hopefully it'll expire worthless. And you'll still have your stock. You'll still have any dividends that you've gotten from the stock. But you've also gotten that $30 that you got from the call option. So that will give you a nice taste of what option selling is all about. You know, it's very basic. It's the simplest trade you can do. And if you own the stock, you can do that. Now, if you do not own stock already, or if you have a small account, then covered calls might not be the best for you. Now, there's something they all called like uh, the poor man's covered call, but that's a little bit more complicated. We're not going to get into that right now. What I would say, if you don't have any stock and you still want to do your first option trade, I would say probably you do something that at our company we call the layup spread. Now, the layup spread is a credit spread with some twists to it, you know, the, the criteria for getting in. And if you want to learn how we do layup spreads, then you can go to simonsaysoptions.com forward slash layup and get the guide. I mean, the guide, it's really cheap and it walks you through exactly how do you pick a trade, how does the trade work, and what are you looking for, okay? So if you need, if you've never done it, then that you know, pick up the guide. It's really cheap, and it'll go step by step, tell you how to do everything. Now, the reason that we call it the layup, the layup spread, is because in basketball, the easiest trade you can make for most people is the layup. Right? It's you're standing really close to the basket. You just jump up, bank the ball, and you know, just throw it into the into the net. And percentage wise, that's the most made shot so the other shot we were thinking about calling it the dunk spread you know because if you go for a slam dunk that's kind of like 
easy, right? That's like probably the easiest. That might be the easier than the layup. But for myself and for Simon, Simon who is the one who wrote the guide and who does these, we really have never dunked in our life. <laughs> and so for us, a dunk is uh, not the easiest trade or not the easiest shot in basketball because we have never done one. We couldn't do one if our lives depended on it. And so for us, it wasn't the dunk that was the easiest. It's the layup that's the easiest. So we call it the layup spread because it's this, probably the easiest trade you can make. Um, and so, uh, that's why we call it that it's a spread, meaning it has two options. You know, you, you sell one and then you buy another one, but really, you know, it's simple. It's something simple. And basically what you do is you find a stock that you like, you want it to be, you know, for your first trade, you want to find something that's really big, like an ETF. You know, you could take a look at SPY would be a good one. Um, that's the S and P 500 ETF. That's a good one. Or find like a large company, you know, maybe Apple, Facebook, Google, any one of these large tech companies, or just those would be good to work with. And you see the chart. Now you don't want to find a chart that's just moving up and down, up and down all over the place. You want to find a stock that's moving in one direction smoothly. You know, so relatively, if you if it's going up, you wanted to go on your screen. If you look at the chart, you wanted to go from the lower left to the top right, and you wanted to go up slowly, slowly, slowly. Not have really, really big moves, but small moves, and just generally going up, up, up. Or if you want one going down, you know, you do the other way. But you don't want it to have big jumps and big movements. You want it to be relatively have a decent slope going up. But smooth. We don't want it to look like big hills and have gaps in the middle and whatnot. So you go through some charts, find one that you like, and then what you do is you want to sell away from the direction. So if it's going up, then we want to sell some puts. So you take a look at the chart and you say, okay, you know, in the next month or so, what are the, you know, I don't think it's going to drop more than, you know, 15% in price. And I can't go through all the, 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 the mechanics of it here, if you want to know in detail, then you have to get the guide. But, you know, the answer to the question is what I'm trying to get to here. But, you know, so basically how it works is if the stock is going up, we think it's going to keep going up. We don't think it's going to drop. But if it drops a little bit, it's okay. We're going to pick a point where we do not think the stock is going to go. So if it's trading at $100 and it's just been going up, 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 we don't think it's going to go all the way down to 90 or 90 or 85 or even 80. So we pick a number or we pick a price where we do not think the stock is going to go in our time frame, maybe 30 days or 60 days, whatever, however long we want to sell the option for. And then that's the option that we sell. That is the put option that we sell. And then we buy another put option right below it, the next put option there. And you can get into this trade for as little as $100. The average trade is probably going to be around $500. Sometimes you have to put... You do that. That's the spread. You have the probabilities in your favor, probably 80 to 90% probability of that working out. And you can make you know 5%, 8%, 10 12% in that short time frame of a month or so. So I think it's a it's a very good strategy because it's less it's less risk, it's very calm. Basically you're just selling some options, have the odds in your favor, the trend is also in your favor, which is a good thing. And then you just sit back and you just watch it and you and you just let it expire. In this particular strategy though, you have to have you have to know when you're going to get out. So you could say, you know, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to adjust it. I'm not going to change it. And so if I'm risking $100, you know, I have an opportunity to make $10, but I'm going to risk $100. So if I lose it, I lose it. So, you, you know, in this case, you know, if you're putting up $100 as uh, your margin, you're going to lose $100 if you don't do anything and the trade totally goes against you, 100% against you if it goes. If it doesn't, you know, the other option you have is that, you can get out if you're down a little bit or if you can learn to adjust, you can do that. There are different ways to play the trade. In the beginning, if this is your first ever trade, I would probably put up 100 bucks and just not do anything. I would just watch it. That's it. See how it goes. See how it feels. If you lose the 100 bucks, you know, see how that feels. That's a learning experience right then and there. You know, it's like, oh man, I just sat here and I didn't do anything. I lost a hundred bucks. This is horrible. I don't like this. I'm not going to do this anymore. But 
if you understand how it works, most of the time it's going to be profitable. So if if it's something that you enjoy doing, then you can look into it further. You know, because for some people, selling options might be just be too boring. You know, putting on a trade and just waiting for it for a month, man, that sucks. I would do that. I want to like be a gunslinger and I'm going to be a better, I'm a poker player. I want to just bet, bet, bet and hopefully I'll hit the lottery. If that's you, then option selling is not for you and this is not the podcast for you anyway. But if it, you know, if this is your first trade, like I said, if you have the, if you have a hundred shares, cover call would be good. If you don't have a hundred shares, the layup spread is something that is right up your alley. Now, of course you could do other things. You could be selling naked puts. You could be doing condors, butterflies, straddles is something that is, is pretty popular. Strangles and straddles are good for people. But I think if this is your first ever trade, you're just looking to get in, you're just looking to get your toe wet, get an experience of what it's really like, covered calls or layup spreads. And again, covered calls are really simple. Um, you can get more information on our website. And credit spreads are, you know, the layup spread is a credit spread with a little bit of a twist. And that the twist is how Simon actually chooses the trades that he does. Because you can go to any stock and say, okay, I'm going to do a credit spread on this trade, on this stock. But to to really get maximum gain out of it, to make sure you win on most of your trades, you're going to have to do a little bit of digging. You're going to have to look at the chart. You're going to have to look at what stocks should you be trading and what stocks you should not be trading. And so Simon actually goes through that on in the guide, in the layup guide. And you can pick that up if you want to. It just puts more odds in your favor, so to speak. Those are the two things I would recommend. Um, again, if you wanted to learn about covered calls, you can go to optiongenius.com forward slash covered calls. We'll put the um, put the link in the show notes. And then if you want to learn about the layup guide, you can pick it up at simonsaysoptions.com forward slash layup guide. All right. If you have any questions, please let me know. And remember, trade with the odds in your favor. All stocks are not created equal. We've analyzed thousands of optionable stocks to find the very best ones to trade options on. Lucky for you, you can just download the list for free. Get it at simonsaysoptions.com forward slash stocks. Again, that's simonsaysoptions.com forward slash stocks.